And how's the weather where you are? It's nice. It was a beautiful day today. Um, I actually went out for a walk in the park. It was very nice. Was, oh, you went for a walk in the park like Jill Scott. Yes, honey. I love it. I love it. You look all pretty and everything. <laughs> Thank you. You as well. I love those earrings. Those are beautiful. Thank you, Amazon, honey. Uh, my favorite, I swear. <laughs> I need to block myself. <laughs> I love it. All right, so let me go ahead and introduce the um, podcast today. I am Kenyatta Gray of Girls Love Flights, Feelings, and Fashion. And tonight, my guest is Marnitra Knight. And Marnitra is extra special to me because she is one of the co-authors of my uh, fifth book release, I Survived. And so I am so honored and so grateful, number one, that you even were interested in participating in this project. And we'll get to learn a little bit more about uh, why in a few minutes. But your story was so very compelling and when I was reading your chapter, it reminded me of some things that I experienced. So it definitely resonated with me. And I know that if it resonated with me, it had to resonate with many, many others as well. So we are going to get started and hopefully more people will join in. So Marnitra, tell us, you know, who you are and where you're from. Okay, um, so my name is Marnie Trinite. I'm from Greensboro, North Carolina, born and raised, home of the HBCU Aggie Pride, a and yeah. yeah. um, and I'm 33 years old, let's see what else, I'm a Scorpio, I enjoy long walks in the park, <laughs> yes, well, I got to tell you something. Um, as soon as I posted your flyer, because I usually just post it on Instagram, but I said, okay, let me post it on Facebook. And immediately, I got a DM from someone asking me, are you single? So, well, well that, that'll be a sidebar, but I just wanted you to know that you had some admirers out here that's just wondering. So, well, okay. we'll get that later. Seriously, I was like, no, you didn't. Right. Um, first off, tune in. <laughs> Exactly. exactly. <laughs> All right, so Marnitra, um, I'm always curious, like, where did you see the ad for um, this project? Was it on my page or another page? My um, what? It was on another, but it was on Instagram. I want to say it was on like Lesbian Network page okay. or something oh. to that degree. Okay. Um, and that that's where I saw it. At. So I saw okay. it on Instagram, and it pulled me in because I was like, oh wow, this is amazing opportunity so you know yeah so let me give a shout out to my girls um black lesbian love so that's yeah. where you found it yeah those are my peeps i love them so hey yeah. all right good so it's always good to know um you know how you um, found out about it i'm always interested in that all right and so but what compelled you to actually apply for the opportunity so I thought about everything that I went through and how sometimes we all go through things in life, but we may keep it a secret. But the only thing is the things that you get through, that you go through and get through is actually something that can inspire someone else that right. needs that push, that needs that boost, that, boost, that motivation. Right. And so I was like, you know, I am at a space, I'm healed from the things that I went through. And so it's, I feel a disservice not to share that with other people and to help them get to that space. Yeah. So that's what made me like, I want to, you know, reach out and share my story. Exactly. <laughs> so what made you select the, um, chapter title, Bruised But Not Broken, because you know I automatically thought of Josh Stone, and that is really one of my favorite songs. Like, I feel it in my soul. So, yes. Yes. So, but so, what made you choose that title? That's actually what inspired um, that song helped me. First off, I'm a lyricist. I love, I, I don't think there's any type of genre of music that I don't like resonate with. Well, maybe hard rock, a little heavy metal. <laughs> right. But <laughs> everything else, I love music. And that's kind of how I relate to life in certain okay. situations. So that song, Bruised But Not Broken, it, it, it really spoke to me when I was going through everything I was going through. And it let me know, okay, whew, you mm. knocked down. Right. You know, you, you was drug through there, through yeah. the wire, but you're still here. You're right. still alive. You're, you're still, still fighting. Here. 
you know, and that just speaks volumes. Um, so I was telling my friend, it's almost like when we buy fruit at the right. grocery store, and sometimes you can get, get it at the grocery store, it's nice. By the time you get it in the car, you hit your brakes, the orange falls, it gets bruised up a little bit. Right. Um, but the thing is, when you peel that fruit or whatever, it's still sweet on the inside. Mm, 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 so. mm. Oh, I love that. I love the analogy. Yeah. All right, so we're not going to go into details um, about the book because I want people to go ahead and download the book. If you click the link in my bio right now, you can actually download, download the book as we talk. Um, the, the, the book is called I Survived, and it is available now if you click my link. But I do want to give um, those that are joining on this call, or sorry, I'm sorry, on this live, just a little bit of what you went through because you're a domestic abuse survivor. So, you know, maybe one incident that really sticks out so we can understand exactly what you went through. Um, so a little snippet of the story, because we want you guys to download it. It's free. Like you can't be free. And if you, you know, share it with somebody, share it with everybody, you know, um, but just a little bit. I started um, early. I was in a relationship at 16. And that's actually when the abuse started with my children's father. Um, and I say, he said, one of the stories that really stick out to me, right. um, was I was pregnant and he was choking me mm. to the point where I could not breathe. Uh, right when I was about to pass out, his grandmother came in and tried to pull him off of me. He pushed her out of the way. And we're going to stop there because you guys are going to download the book and get more. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Exactly. Oh, that, that is, it's, it's a cliffhanger, but you definitely, like, my heart is pounding because I can imagine, like, the fear and you just didn't know what was going to happen next. So, yeah, definitely, guys, I want you to go ahead and go ahead and download the book right now. Yes. And so, you know, when you were... um you already said that you were 16 when and so that's very very young so to me similar to me that's your introduction to love and relationships yes you know and so that that's um that's uh, not good you know what i mean and yeah. it's, that's not a good introduction because that's not what it's all about so how did you um what did you tell anybody when you were going through this so young did you tell anybody or did you keep this a secret I kept it a secret because I thought, okay, maybe I did something wrong. Maybe this is my fault. Let me not say things to him this way. Let me not do things this way. Let me not, you know, X, Y, Z, you know, almost like a checklist until yeah. you get to the point where you're like, okay, I'm, I'm walking on eggshells. Right. And then you realize that it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with you that that's someone else's stuff that they choose to project on you right. however you have to get to a point where you're like i choose me i love me and in loving me i can't subject myself to that behavior right you know? mm -hmm. so, so i didn't i didn't tell anyone i kept it to myself until i got to the point where i really was like okay enough is enough and that's right. when i reached out and was like, I gotta, I gotta get out of this. <laughs> right. And you know what? Sometimes I think that people don't tell what's going on because they feel like, well, what's going on in my household is my business. And then secondly, they want to continue to project this image that everything is okay. It's something dory, we in love, but behind closed doors, they are going through some things that we wouldn't even imagine. Mm -hmm. So it's um, you know. I don't know. You know, I think that at some point, someone needs to say something, you know, when they're going through um, these kind of incidents. So, you know, at any time, was this your first and, first and last um, abusive relationship? It was. It was oh, my God. first. Okay. Yeah. Woo. Yes. yes. <laughs> you didn't have to go through a, uh, for 10 years and figure out, oh, no, that's not for me. Okay. Yeah. Now, it went from the age of, like, 18, no, excuse me, from the age of 16 to, like, 22, 23 in my 
late twenties. So it went for a while. But, right, but that's because you were so young and you yeah. were, I mean, you're still trying to figure out, well, is this love? I mean, yes, love? adolescence, like, right. hmm, is this the way that this works? Like, right. how about, I need a manuscript. No, exactly. <laughs> I need it exactly. to do. Oh, my God. So at any time, though, in, in that relationship, did it ever get to a point where you actually feared for your life? Definitely. Um, definitely. On my 18th birthday, I was in the ER. Like, I tell people to this day, that's a birthday. Because, you know, that's like, you're an adult. You your are. birthday. You know, you can't wait. You're like, oh, 18. I can right. go to the store. And I don't even smoke. But you're like, I can buy cigarettes if I want to. I, I didn't. But, you know, right. you're like, I can go to the club. You can do things. And so you're so excited because you're still, um, a, you're still, you know, an adolescent. Right. But you're not quite grown yet right um and so most people are like so that's a major birthday it's usually yeah. 16 18 21 yeah. etc yeah. my 18th birthday my eyeball was hanging out of my head like and I didn't know what was next I didn't know if you know I was gonna make it right. um and still you know that e even in being in fear there was something in me that still stayed right I, you know it's like mm -hmm. oh oh gosh but yeah that was one of the times I definitely mm -hmm. which actually I believe that story is one of the ones that I speak about in the book you guys download right. the book <laughs> download the book so I know you know a lot of times women stay and you know People have all kinds of reasons, but a lot of times it's um, due to um, uh, financial support, financial reasons. Mm -hmm. And they really can't picture themselves um, being able to make it or survive without this person. And so they continue to stay in those types of relationships. So uh, I applaud you, you know, for being able to come to terms with something. And that's what you're going to tell me. What was that turning point? that light bulb that went off in your head and you were like, oh, hell to the no. <laughs> this is not going to be how this story ends for Marnie Trinite. Yes. So, it, I'm going to say this because everybody's um, journey is different. Right. You may have a turning point and then go back and then, right. you know, we all Real do talk. our thing. But the thing Real about talk. it is there was a point where my daughters um, started to see it, and I knew as a parent, okay, mm. Nitra, if you can't choose you, you have to choose them because they didn't choose to be here. Yes. Um, and you don't want them to think that that's what love is because exactly. you know it's not. Exactly. You know, even though, yes, you did start this young, right? You know, you were being grown, whatever. The point is, as you get older, you, you get wiser, and you're like, I don't want them to think that this is okay because it's not okay for exactly. me. Exactly. Um, and that was a turning point. I wanted better for them. And then wanting right. better for them, I started to want better for myself. Exactly. Because I was like, okay, well, mm -hmm. if I don't want this for them, I shouldn't want it for me either. Because, exactly. you know, that's not what love is. Right. It's know? so true. It's so true. So, Marnicha, when you started to, you know, have these um, revelations and, you know, thinking about the example that you were setting for your daughters, but did you have any um, outside therapy? Because I'm a big advocate of mental health, mental health therapy. You know, mm -hmm. when you need it, you need it. And some people, you know, in, in our culture, they yes. um, feel like you can just pray it away. Um, but I, I'm a big advocate of um, mental health. So did you um, look into those kind of um, interventions to just try to help yourself heal and get through? So when I left, I went to a battered women's shelter and mm -hmm. they actually offer free um, counseling. Mm -hmm. However, the mm -hmm. counselor was horrible. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> she was horrible. Okay. And so I was like, mm -hmm, not interested. I'll right. figure it out by myself. Oh, no. Um, but no, I say okay. that and, I, and I, I say that really to encourage someone because okay. what I did was I still internalized and it affected me with other relationships mm. later. And so I got to the point where I was like, you know what? Mm -hmm. 
every therapist is not the same. And I have to awesome. do that for me. Yes. And so I reached out. I'm currently um, in therapy and she is amazing. Yes. Um, <laughs> she's oh, amazing. Good. And okay. um, I say that just to say that there may be you. It, it, it's not always easy. You know, right. we can make it seem like, oh, you can, you know, it may not always be, easy, right. but it's possible. And the first one may not work and that's right. okay, but don't give up. Continue to want to pour into yourself. That's right. Um, because like I said, I end up internalizing later mm -hmm. with other relationships. And I got to where I was like, I'm not going to do this. Right. I need to heal Nitra. That's right. Fully. And so, yeah, I'm with a therapist now. She's amazing. I've been with her for a little while. And I think mm -hmm. that it is definitely helping. And Marnitra, I'm so glad to hear that, you know, after that one bad experience, you didn't just say, oh, therapists are bad. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm never going to find a great one. And that you were willing to give someone else a chance and it worked out. And you're with that person and you're healing and you're getting healthy. So that is good. So that is the part of you and the part of the story that makes you a survivor. Yeah. So now we want to up it up a notch. But wait a minute, before we up it up a notch, I want to know um, if someone's on this live right now and they are going through, um, and, you know, they're in an abusive relationship, no matter what the makeup is, woman, woman, man, 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 woman, you know, do you have any um, words of encouragement for those individuals? Oh, I do. Um, so I tell one of my best friends, because she just got out of a situation, and I tell her this, that so I grew up in the church. I'm not religious, I'm spiritual now. Right. But um one thing I do love um is the scripture first Corinthians thirteen, four through eight, and it talks about what love is. Yes. Love is patient, mm. love is kind, yes. it doesn't envy, it doesn't boast, like and the thing about it is if you don't feel that Mm. it's okay to leave it's okay to choose you we grow up in a society where we're taught that being selfish is wrong but the right. thing is sometimes you have to choose self because yeah. if you don't then there is nothing left it's you true. know love is not putting hands on someone not even just hands but verbal abuse love is yeah. not you stupid you're fat you're no, that's not love. That's not that does it makes you question does the person even like me if they speak to me? Exactly. Love is reciprocity. It's mm -hmm. a give and take and not a heavy burden. Mm -hmm. And so the thing is if you feel those things, it's okay to choose you and mm -hmm. it's okay to leave. It doesn't mean that you don't love that person. Sometimes you love them enough to know the situation isn't for us. That's yeah. right. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. So well, that's my words of wisdom. <laughs> I, I feel that, that, that my someone. spirit, my nature. And just like I said, <laughs> just because you choose you, you choose what's best for you, that does not make you selfish. Mm -hmm. And people need to really understand that. That's a key takeaway. I absolutely respect that. So, Marnitra, so not only are you a survivor, <laughs> you are a thriver. Yes. So tell us. And this is not your first author gig, honey. You are already an author. <laughs> an author before I, you met me. So tell us about your book that you already, because I remember I was emailing you or texting you. You were like, oh, wait a minute, hold on. I'm, I'm at my book sign. I'm like, oh, excuse me, honey. So, Tell us about your new release and okay. what you have coming up in the future. Okay, so I am an author. Yeah. Um, I have my book, Vibrational Essence, uh, 30, 32 Point oh, Reflections. I don't know if you guys can see it, but um, the link to purchase it is in my bio. It's $20. That's practically yeah. free. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it's it's such a great book. It's for anyone going through anything. It literally is 32 inserts. Um, mm. And it covers 
it covers domestic violence, it covers adolescent experiences, it covers relationships, cancer, um, mm -hmm. just different, different things. And right. what it really was, was a release for me. Okay. Um, after um, my late husband passed away, mm -hmm. I, I needed an outlet and poetry right. has always been that for me. So it's a great, great book. Um, and mm -hmm. I just, encourage you guys to get it and like i said i it's a it's a great release it's a great yeah. therapy um, yes so marnie i will be placing my order tonight because i definitely would <laughs> love to um just read more about you know what you've been through and i i want to support Thank so you. i would definitely be placing my order tonight because i didn't realize that it covered so many different topics and so um can you give us your Instagram handle and if you have a website. Yes. Okay. So even though I'm young, I'm kind of new to old. <laughs> but I am lyrically me on Instagram. It's L Y R I C A L L Y N I. Um, feel free to follow me. I don't have. I'm currently working on a website as well as I'm working on a new book called Evolving Love. Mm, nice. <laughs> Wow. And so definitely stay tuned for that one. It's going to be just, it's going to be great. I'm looking forward to that. Um, but yes, feel free to follow me on Instagram or my Facebook page is Marnie Trinight, um, M-A-R-N-I-T-R-A, -A, first name, last name, Knight, K-N-I-G-H-T. Awesome. Okay, so you have your own website. You have another book coming out. That is so exciting. So I can't <laughs> wait to hear more about that. I can't wait to repost when you start posting about it. Thank you. So this has been a really wonderful opportunity just to get a glimpse into who you are for you and I to actually connect. Yes. We've been just doing a email. And I have to tell you, it has been an absolute pleasure and a joy to work with you the process was so easy you know and so i i appreciate your um, commitment and your dedication to the project you know we about to go global yeah uh, with our book so i am really pleased about that and so usually um if if do you have any final words that you want to say um before we go into your favorite song yes okay so I just want to say that um, if you or know someone who is going through domestic violence or who has been through domestic violence and they need someone to talk to, um, please feel free to DM me, um, email me. My email is my first name and last name at gmail.com. I definitely am here to be a soundboard and you know support in whatever way i can um reach out to resources because yeah. the thing is it takes a village yeah. you know we all go through things but just we can make it through we can make it through we're stronger than you know anything that that like i said bruised but not broken yes Yes, and I, I appreciate that, Marnitra. And so whether it's someone that's on this Instagram Live or this this Instagram Live will go on YouTube, it will be distributed all over the place. And so I appreciate the fact that you're willing to say, hey, I've been there, let's talk about it. I can be a shoulder for you. More people need to know that there are people that are willing and want to support them. So I really applaud that. Thank you. Oh, and I want to so, say one more thing. I'm sorry. Yeah. And I just want to say that it's possible to get out. I don't care what, because I was told, ain't nobody going to want no woman mm. with three kids or four kids, you know, whatever. And the thing is, that's not true. A people, right. somebody did want me. Somebody put a ring on it. You know, <laughs> Now, See, that's they're, they're, just like me because I was told ain't nobody gonna want you with your two kids. That's Damn. Damn. <laughs> so, but the thing is, now they're they're gone now. God rest his soul. But yeah. he really showed me what what I deserve. What I knew, but he showed me. He re helped reassure what love really was, and that also that even if you have to start because i lived in the projects i was on how housing authority and food yeah. stamps and okay. i've been through that 
that that is a stepping stone. You don't have to stay there because I'm not there now. So like I said, don't let your the, what you're in now feel like it's forever because it's not. This too shall pass. Yes. So. I love it. <laughs> All right. So if you're just joining us, this is Marnitra Knight, a co-author of my book, I Survived. She has been dropping some gems. I cannot believe how wonderful this interview has been. <laughs> and so we are actually getting ready to close out, but I always like to invite my guests to tell me what their favorite song is. Okay. So we're going to do a little jam session. I do not own the rights to this music, but um, Alexa does. <laughs> okay. What's your favorite song? What's your favorite? Actually, I want to be specific. What's your favorite song that encourages you to be strong? So remember I told you I'm a music lover. I have three, yeah. but you can pick which one you want. Okay. So the first one is Katy Perry, Roar. Ooh, yes, um, Katy Perry. Okay. And so that one, Josh okay. Stone, Bruised But Not Broken. Ooh. Oh my God, you make me hard. And then the last one is It's All Right by Lettucey. Black Ooh. can bring less than many changes. It's all right. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> Hold on, let's do some Katy Perry roar though. I'm feeling yeah, that. That's okay. it. Alexa, play Roar by Katy Perry. Roar by Katy Perry on Amazon Music. Yes. <laughs> Alexa, volume up. Can you hear my name? Yes. Woo! Hey. So I I But everything you help me feel, but I got I it. I just know that's it. My friend gonna shake the ground. You held me down, but I got up. Cause I had enough. I see it now. I got the eye of the tiger. Fire. Dancing through the fire. Cause I am a champion. And you're gonna feel me roll. Louder. Louder than the lion. Cause